Many insects and other related pests attack ornamental plants in Florida. Accurate identification of the pests is essential because different pests may not be controlled by the same method. Note the type of plant it was found feeding on as well as the observed damage since many ornamental plant pests have common names associated with the plant. Once the pest is identified, figure out its life cycle, when it is most active, and when it is most vulnerable to control methods. Knowing the general biology of the pest is critical to the next steps of the IPM framework. I'm Dr. DeBusk and in this video I'll discuss common species of arthropod pests of landscape ornamental plants. Scales, mealybugs, aphids, whiteflies, lace bugs, mites, and thrips have piercing and sucking mouthparts. These pests insert their straw-like mouthparts into the plant. Then they extract sap from the plant. Many of these insects feed on the underside of leaves, but you can see the damage on the surfaces of leaves. The leaves appear stippled or chlorotic. Soft scales, mealybugs, whiteflies, and aphids are insects that excrete large amounts of honeydew, a sugary waste product. A black fungus known as sooty mold grows on the honeydew. Sooty mold imparts a black appearance on the plant and slows plant growth. Once you control the insects, honeydew and sooty mold usually diminish. Mites, although not true insects, also possess piercing and sucking mouthparts. Scales are serious pests on many ornamental plants. Most ornamentals are susceptible to one or more kinds of scales. They extract juices from the plants causing an unhealthy appearance. Scales cause leaf drop and twig dieback resulting in little new growth. Scales are divided into several groups including armored scales, soft scales, and mealybugs. Armored scales secrete a hard, waxy protective covering over their bodies. They do not produce honeydew. These scales may be circular, oval, oblong, thread-like, or pear-shaped. T-scales are an example of armored scales. Young nymphs hatch from eggs. Nymphs, also known as crawlers, move around to find new feeding sites. After they begin feeding, they remain in that same location for most of their lifespan. Soft scales also secrete a waxy covering over themselves. This covering is not hard and attaches to the scale's body. They secrete honeydew, which may result in sooty mold. Soft scales are different colors, sizes, and shapes. The scales may move around in any of their life stages. Florida wax scale are soft scales. Mealybugs are covered in a white, waxy material that looks like powder or cotton. They can easily move around on branches or leaves and wind may disperse them. Mealybugs accumulate in masses that appear like fluffs of cotton on leaves or branches. These insects can be major pests on many plants in greenhouses and landscapes. Aphids have soft bodies shaped like pears. The color is variable. They can be green, black, brown, red, or yellow. Aphids feed on young, developing leaves, buds, and shoots of many plants. Their feeding distorts new growth and causes leaves to curl. Several types of aphids carry viruses that they vector to plants during feeding. These viruses may be more damaging or lethal to plants than the aphids themselves. Aphids are unusual when compared to other insects. Almost all of them are females that reproduce without mating. Thus, they hardly ever produce eggs. Instead, many aphids give birth to live young, producing large populations very quickly. Aphids are an example of an arthropod that has traits contributing to resistance development, such as having many generations per year, exposure of multiple generations to a pesticide, having a lot of offspring, limited dispersal, and exposure to sublethal pesticide doses. Whiteflies are common pests of ornamental plants. These insects extract sap from leaves, causing the upper surface of leaves to become stippled. Adult whiteflies look like tiny white moss. Their four wings and bodies are covered with an even fine white powder of wax. Adults are 1 16th to 1 8th inch long. White nymphs look like clear colored translucent scales. The silver leaf whitefly is the most damaging of these insects in Florida. Whiteflies can carry many viruses that cause disease. Since its first report from Miami-Dade County in 2009, the Rugos spiraling whitefly has become an escalating problem for homeowners, landscapers, businesses, and government officials throughout the southern coastal counties of Florida. Lace bugs are small, broad, flat insects. They are about one-eighth of an inch long. Adult bodies are brown or black. Their wings look like lace under a hand lens or microscope. Nymphs have spines. Lace bugs feed on the underside of leaves. 
Damage appears as white stippling on the upper surfaces of leaves. Lace bugs leave brown spots of excrement and discarded skins on the undersides of leaves. The fecal spots cover each egg a lace bug produces. The most common lace bugs are the azalea, hawthorn, pyracantha, and sycamore. Their names are derived from their host plants. Thrips are very small, thin, yellow-brown, orange, or black insects. They are only 1 25th to 1 8th of an inch long. They are most abundant in the spring. These insects roughly rasp new leaves and flowers when they feed. Rasping results in uneven streaks on the plant instead of stippling. Some thrips leave fecal spots on the undersides of leaves. Infested buds do not open or flowers do not develop normally. Damaged flowers lose their color and buds usually drop. Like aphids and white flies, thrips also carry viruses that can damage plants. Mites are relatives of insects. They are more closely related to spiders and ticks. Adult mites, spiders, and ticks have eight legs and two body sections, whereas adult insects have six legs and three body sections. Adult mites feed on the underside of leaves. You often do not know these very tiny mites are present until damage appears. Mites have needle-like piercing mouth parts that insert into leaves and extract plant sap. Damage from a few mites appears as yellow or gray stipple patterns on the upper leaf surface. Some mites, such as spider mites, spin fine strands of webbing on, their ho on the host plant, hence their name. Webs may also entirely cover branches or plants. Large populations of mites cause the leaves to turn yellow, gray, or brown. Leaves may drop early. Damage is most severe during hot, dry weather. You can see mites if you inspect the undersides of leaves with a 10x or 15x magnifying glass. You can also hold a piece of white paper below a plant part that you suspect has mites. Tap the plant so some of them fall on the paper. Watch for mites as they appear like tiny dots moving around on the paper. Mites vary in color and may be green, red, yellow, purple, black, or transparent. You may see their gray cast skins among the live mites. The two-spotted spider mite is the most common mite pest on ornamental plants in Florida. Rob mites and cyclamen mites also damage many ornamentals. Their bodies are translucent. Injured leaves are distorted or cupped and smaller than normal. These mites are most active in cooler temperatures and high humidity. Caterpillars, beetles, beetle larvae, soft fly larvae, grasshoppers, and others have chewing mouth parts. The immature larvae are usually the most damaging. However, adults may also feed. These insects may feed almost anywhere on the plants. Larvae are the most active feeding stage of the insects. Most larvae appear as worms with segments and legs. Chewing insects are divided into defoliators, borers, leaf miners, and gall makers. Caterpillars and adult beetles are the most common insects that can strip leaves from plants. Caterpillars begin feeding immediately after hatching. After they feed for several days, most of the leaf tissue is eaten, leaving the midribs or veins, which is known as skeletonizing. As they mature, caterpillars may consume all of the leaf tissue. Some plants may grow new leaves, other plants like pines or evergreens die. Some caterpillars, such as the fall webworm, make silk webs around branches in many species of trees. Fall webworms prefer hickory, elm, sweet gum, and oak trees. The caterpillars feed on leaves in their webs and can defoliate trees. Fall webworms have either black heads with yellowish white bodies or red heads with brown bodies. Both color forms have pairs of obvious dark spots in each section on their backs. Long, silky gray hairs cover their bodies, which are one inch long. Some caterpillars are concealed by rolling leaves around themselves. These leaf rollers tie leaves together with strands of silk. Other caterpillars, such as the bagworm, form a case or covering around themselves for protection. Bagworms construct their cases from silk and plant pieces, including leaves, needles, or twigs. The bags hang from plants, from which the caterpillars extend their heads out to feed. The bags are often mistaken for cones on pines or evergreens. The azalea caterpillar feeds on the azalea leaves. Mature caterpillars are two inches long and have red heads and legs. Broken yellow or white stripes run the length of their bodies. When it is disturbed, the caterpillar raises its front and rear ends. Although it possesses long hairs, it does not sting or irritate the skin. The larvae of the spotted oleander caterpillar moth feed only on oleander bushes and are poisonous to people, birds, and small animals. The pale cream to light yellow eggs are laid in masses of 12 to 75 on the underside of leaves. Larvae are from 3 to 40 millimeters long. 
They are orange with tufts of stiff reddish brown hairs emerging from spots along their bodies. Young larvae skeletonize new oleander shoots which turn light brown. Older larvae can completely defoliate oleander bushes. The adult stage of the oleander caterpillar is sometimes called the polka dot wasp moth. Its wings and body are iridescent, continuously changing between green and blue. The body, wings, legs, and antennae have small white spots on them. Their rear ends are red-orange. The moths fly slowly and are active during daylight. Some immature and adult beetle species will also feed on leaves. Adult beetles are hard-shelled insects varying widely in color, including black, brown, and brightly colored. Adults may chew holes in leaves, flowers, or fruit. Because they can fly, adult beetles move from plant to plant. Some are active in the day, others at night. Grasshoppers and katydids sometimes consume a great amount of foliage on ornamental plants. Some adults can be black, brown, or yellow with varying patterns on their wings and are very visible. Immatures, the nymphs, have a similar appearance to adults but are smaller. The eastern lubber grasshopper is the largest grasshopper in Florida. Adults can grow longer than two and a half inches. They have short wings and cannot fly. They will often invade residential areas and feast on flowering plants, especially amaryllis, narcissus, and crinum. Some insects are referred to as borers because they bore into trunks, stems, branches, bark, or roots. Common examples are flat-headed, round-headed, and clear-winged borers and ambrosia and bark beetles. Borers may attack plants and trees weak from stress or injury. Stress problems include drought, saltwater flooding, too much soil or mulch added or removed, compacted soil caused by construction equipment and vehicle and foot traffic, injuries to the trunk or roots from lightning, lawnmowers and other machinery, digging, herbicides and vehicles, and transplant shock when plants get moved. The Red Bay Ambrosia beetle was introduced into the southeastern United States in 2002 and has since become economically important in Florida. The pest continues to expand rapidly into new areas, posing a threat to Red Bay and avocado trees. The beetle and its associated fungus transmit the causal pathogen of the very serious laurel wilt disease among plants in the laurel family and can cause whole tree death. Small strings of compacted sawdust protruding from the bark at the point of attack are an indication of an infestation of the red bay ambrosia beetle. Trees infested with lower wilt are characterized by a dark discoloration in the outer sapwood. Affected trees exhibit wilted foliage with a reddish or purplish discoloration. Exit holes of adult flat-headed borers are often shaped like the letter D. These adults have an appearance similar to bullets or shiny metal. Exit holes of round-headed borer adults are often round. Adults have long antennae. Clearwing borers are moth caterpillars. The moths fly during the day and may have a wasp-like appearance. Several of these borers, including the peach tree borer, are common pests and can cause serious damage. All stone fruits in the genus Prunus, which include peach and ornamental shrubs, are susceptible to damage by the peach tree borer. It bores through roots and trunks of trees and may produce masses of gum and sawdust at the base of trees. Unlike most other borers, the peach tree borer prefers healthy plants. Feeding damage by these larvae weaken trees and decreases productivity. If there is a complete girdling of the trees by the larvae, tree death can occur. Bark beetles are especially damaging to pine trees. They tunnel into inner bark and feed on the cambium or living parts of the tree. The tunnels the bark beetles create are visible if you remove the bark. The Ips engraver, black turpentine beetle, and southern pine beetle are the most common bark beetles. Of those, the southern pine beetle is the most destructive in the southern United States. Bark beetles often attack trees in massive numbers. These beetles are inside trees if you see reddish colored dust from the boring around the entrance holes and cracks in the bark, sap oozing and hardening at the entrance holes, known as pitch tubes, many small round exit holes giving the bark an appearance it has been blasted by a shotgun. Leaf miners tunnel or mine between the upper and lower surfaces of leaves. These insects can be serious pests of commercial flowers, especially lantana, chrysanthemums, bedding plants, and citrus. Leaf miners have very short lives, therefore they spend little time actually causing damage. Leaf miners are the larvae of flies, moss, or beetles. Flies are the most common. The leaf miner that does the most damage in Florida is the serpentine. These leaf miners leave winding trails in the leaves. 
The blotch leaf miners cause blotches or blisters instead of serpentine patterns. Blotches are wide brown spots on leaves. Galls are growths on plants and you may often find them on oak trees. Insects develop and feed inside galls forming the gall. They can cause an un unsightly appearance to plants, leaf drop, and branch dieback. Galls can form on leaves, buds, flowers, twigs, stems, or roots. Depending on the kind of gall, galls may range in size from slight swellings to large growths to the size of golf balls or baseballs. Fungi, bacteria, nematodes, mites, or insects may cause galls. Insects that most commonly cause galls are gall wasps, gall midges, aphids, psyllids, thrips, and phylloxerans. In this video, I hope you learned about some of the ornamental arthropod pests that cause problems in the landscape. The first step in integrated pest management is to ID the pest. Once you know what the pest is, you can develop a plan to manage it.